Hi, my name's Jackie Klein, and in this series we're going to be taking a close look at what's called performance art, exploring five different ways in which we might encounter it inside and sometimes outside the museum. We'll also be trying to answer questions like, why are these people dancing in a museum? Why am I allowed to touch this? And is this really art? Here's a brain teaser. Does live art need to be experienced live? In this episode, we're going to be looking at artists who've used film, video and photography in combination with performance art. What happens when someone pulls out a camera? Think about all of the clips we've seen so far. None of these have happened live in front of us. Recordings are an essential part of how we experience performance art. In episode one, we saw how the pioneering dance choreographer Merce Cunningham opened up new possibilities for movement in art. But there was another equally important aspect of his work, his collaborations with the filmmaker Charles Atlas. I worked with Merce Cunningham on and off for over a period of 40 years. We worked on pieces together, the pieces that were made first for the camera, because we were making films, and so we wanted the films to have their own integrity. Since they became widely available in the 60s, cameras have been used by artists to document their performances. The American Bruce Nauman was a pioneer of this. He believed that anything he did in his studio was art, so he set up cameras there to capture his actions. Some performances never even encounter a live audience. Tenderizer. They're completely staged for the camera, not so very different from something you'd see in the cinema. This is a film by the artist Jack Smith, where participants perform for the camera. But Smith took things one step further. At his New York screenings, he'd get up on stage and start performing in front of his films, making the film screening into an event. The artist Joan Jonas has also explored merging live performances with video projection. In the 60s, I saw happenings and performance by visual artists. And that inspired me to shift because I saw that I could make a much more dimensional work because there wasn't really such a thing as installation art at that time. And also, the minute I started performing, I loved to perform and I could see that I could develop my gestures and images through working with my body. These artists are asking, what happens if we rethink the idea that a film is something that we just watch? What if it's something we experience? British artist Liz Rhodes completely reversed the idea of a film screening by enabling viewers to walk through the projection rather than just looking at it. The actual spacing of the screens, the two screens, is very critical to it. It was, um, in a sense, uh, an opposition to uh, commercial cinema where the screen is very dominant and the audience sits. Aldo Tambellini combined completely different media, performance, film, poetry and political protest, to create a unique experience. You wanted the audience to be, to be part of it as much as you can, even, even with the seating in the place. All these examples show how the availability of technology has allowed artists to find different ways of tackling the ephemeral nature of performance and expanding the limits of what we can experience inside the art gallery. In the next and final episode, we'll be looking at artists who've sought to engage with life outside the gallery to ask the question, can art change society? See you then.